When I migrated over to macOS at the end of 2021, I was already expecting a not so smooth transition as macOS is fundamentally different from Windows. Some features will be available in macOS, but some are not. So I had to look for some utilities to make sure macOS work the way I want it to be. Here are eight of my must-have utilities on macOS, tried and tested throughout the years as I've been on macOS since the end of 2021. Hit that like and subscribe button because it took me literally a lot of trial and error to find the proper utility and even paid for some utility with my own money too. The first one is going to be Linear Mouse. This is a free app that changes how the mouse and trackpad behaves. We can change if we want it to be in reverse scrolling or not because as we know, macOS scrolling direction is inverted compared to Windows. And this app lets us change it to however we want. It works for both vertical and horizontal scrolling too. If you are also like me who uses an external mouse, then you probably want to disable mouse acceleration. This app also lets us do that too. And we can change this setting in a per mouse basis. So an external mouse can have acceleration turned off, but the trackpad will still have acceleration turned on. And most importantly of all, universal front and back buttons. It's extremely useful and it just irks me to think that Apple didn't implement this feature in their operating system directly. There are some features that are available on Linear Mouse, but these are the only features that I am highlighting today because those are the ones that I use. Next up is SoundSource, a paid software that I cannot live without. This might be how I set up my workstation, but it is ultimately still a problem that exists only on macOS. You see, I have speakers connected to the monitor. Since this monitor has a KVM switch, then I can just switch everything connected to the monitor between my Mac and PC seamlessly. Link at the top right corner there if you want to know more about KVMs. Now, the problem with this setup is that I cannot adjust the volume on macOS because this monitor does not support CEC. SoundSource fixes this issue and I can control volume once again on my macOS. This is an especially true situation for Mac minis since uh, yeah, it is up to us to connect whatever display we want to the Mac mini. I don't know why Apple thought this is a good decision because now I have to run sound source at the background at all times and have this little dot at the top right corner there because it is constantly using some permissions. Sound source can do a lot more things like artificially boosting the volume of certain apps and also changing the EQ but I don't use any of those features other than just to control the volume. There are some alternatives out there but they are very outdated and they don't work with macOS Sequoia. For the third utility, it's monitor control. This utility is rather simple and we can adjust the connected display's brightness without actually touching the monitor. Monitors can connect via the DDC slash CI protocol and this app takes advantage of that. Monitor control also offers a lot more features like volume control and whatnot, but I don't use any of that. There is another light version of this app that can only change the brightness and I think the light version is more suitable since it's much more straightforward. It's a supremely useful tool, especially for Mac Mini. On Windows, I find myself constantly hitting Windows plus V key to activate the built-in clipboard manager. It's a super helpful utility, so the fourth utility that I use on macOS is called Clippy with one P. It's a similar clipboard management utility that can be activated via any keyboard shortcut key that I assign it to or via the menu bar at the top. It has a simple interface that shows you what you have copied previously and then we can paste accordingly. It works for both text and images like screenshots too. We can also configure how many items to show up within Clippy but I'll just leave it at 10. However, the last version of the official release is back in 2018 and it's even older than Apple Silicon. So it is running on x86 and translated to ARM via Rosetta. But since Clippy is open source, other developers forked this project and updated it to support newer operating systems and also made it run natively on Apple Silicon. That's the beauty of open source software. 
Next up is Rectangle. This is a utility that works similarly to how Windows work with the window snapping for better multitasking. We can customize keyboard shortcuts on how we want the windows to snap to whichever location, or we can just customize how the window snaps when we drag the window around with our mouse. There is also a paid version of Rectangle that offers more features, but I am perfectly fine with the free version. I also utilize Rectangle alongside the built-in hot corner feature to launch Mission Control and these two features can elevate my efficiency while working on macOS. I know that macOS also has its built-in window snapping feature since Sequoia, but Rectangle is just much better since I am using an external keyboard and it does not have the Mac FN key. I'm not sure this falls under utilities, but Onyx is a free app that is one of my must-have applications on macOS. This app is quite advanced as it can clean some system files and whatnot, but the one thing that I want to do is this option. Previously, whenever I open text edit, it will ask me to save the document first, as in to create a blank document before even start typing. And I just find this to be super annoying. So I just wanted to create a blank document before actually saving. And this option lets me do that. Now, I'm a weird person. I love Macs, but I use Android phones. Transferring files between Androids and Macs is not as straightforward as you think. There is an obsolete app called the Android File Transfer developed by Google themselves, but this app is no longer available for download and I just think that it's obsolete and this method also requires a cable. What if I want to transfer files wirelessly? Then enter NearDrop and LocalSend. Both of these apps are free but they do pretty much the same thing. NearDrop acts like a middleman between Android's QuickShare and macOS's AirDrop and it works well and it also has great transfer speeds. It's also reliable as well. But sometimes I want to transfer files from macOS to my phone, and this is where another app called Local Send appears. Essentially, it works the same as NearDrop, but with much more control, and it is also bi-directional. I switch between these two utilities back and forth, and that is why I just put both of them together. For number eight, I also won't call this a utility, but it is because of how macOS behaves, I just put this under utility. You see, pressing the play button on the keyboard actually brings up Apple Music. I don't use Apple Music and I use YouTube Music. So how do I fix this? Well, there's no straightforward way to fix it. There was a utility called Bearded Spice from uh, many years ago and it seems to be abandoned as well. So I switch over to this YouTube Music player on GitHub. It has a lot more features available like bypassing ads, skipping over silence and dislike music and it also works great with multimedia keys. So now it wouldn't launch Apple Music whenever I hit the play button. Yeah, that, that's how I quote unquote fix this issue. And those are some of the utilities that I use on a daily basis on macOS. They are extremely useful and I just can't live without any of the eight utilities shown in this video. Do let me know which is your favorite utility and do let me know if I miss any of your favorites as well. I would like to learn more about how you use macOS, so yeah, leave them down in the comment section below. Remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.